first weather forecast. And Roswell becomes another New Mexican city to add a baby box. News 3 New Mexico starts right now. This is News 3 New Mexico, your local source for news, sports, and first weather. Good evening and welcome to News 3 New Mexico. I'm Emily Wilbanks. And I'm Andres Chavez. Thank you so much for watching. According to a press release, Alexander Romero is facing a first-degree murder charge in the city of Fortales. The 9th Judicial District Attorney announced on, on February 8, 2024, Curry County District Ju Court Judge David Reeve found there to be sufficient probable cause for the state to proceed on charges of first-degree murder against Alexander Romero. The charges stem from August 2023 when Romero shot Jimenez and he succumbed to his injuries. Romero faces 18 years in prison and is currently being held at the Curry County Detention Center pending trial. She will be arraigned in court in district court within the next two weeks with a trial date set at some point in the future. For more information, please contact the district attorney's office at 575-769-2246. Do you want a chance to meet with a local cop in Curry County? The Melrose Senior Center is hosting a Coffee with a Cop event on Thursday, February 16th at 9 a.m. The event is sponsored by the Curry County Sheriff's Office as an opportunity for citizens to meet and engage with deputies. This event encourages citizens and deputies to learn more about each other and help both parties learn more about their roles within Curry County. The Melrose Senior Center can be found at 427 North Main Street, Melrose, New Mexico. Along with it being Valentine's Day, today is also Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is a Mass celebrated by Catholics commencing the first day of Lent. The Mass is celebrated with Christians getting marked with a cross on their forehead made of ash. The ashes come from burning palm branches left over from another important day for Christians known as Palm Sunday. Lent is a 40-day period designated for prayer, penance, almsgiving, and fasting until Easter Sunday. The tradition of Lenten fasting has been around since the 5th to 9th century where Catholics spend time intensifying their relationship with God in forms of prayer or giving up something. A New Mexico police officer was killed while responding to a trespassing call last Sunday on February 11th. Jonah Hernandez was responding to the call and was stabbed to death by a suspect believed to be around 29 years old. The suspect was then shot and killed by a witness to the attack, and the witness then used the officer's radio to call for help. Hernandez had been with the Las Cruces Police Department for two years and leaves behind a wife and two sons ages 10 and 2 years old. New Mexico State Police are now also investigating the incident. Well, guys, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed my Super Bowl Sunday. I definitely enjoyed it in the snow. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I'm happy there's sun now, though. Yeah, unfortunately, that's gonna the snow is just going to start to melt, and the wind is going to start coming back up on that rise. As we see over here currently for the, for, the, for the central part of the United States, we have some snow piling up in through Minneapolis into Wisconsin. And for the western part of the country, we have some rain and sm snow piling up through San Francisco. It's going to head up north into Oregon as well. Taking a look at New Mexico's wind right now, we have, we have a bunch of 10 miles per hour winds kind of heading out through most of the state. But as you can see here, we're seeing that 20 miles per hour is going to start fading up, and it's gonna, that wind speed started going to go even faster, up to even 50 miles per hour, the more north you travel along this line. And as we go into tomorrow, we're going to see some more 10 to 20 to even 30 miles per hour wind throughout more of the state. And as we start to pass into, into Friday, we're going to have a nice, easy morning some 10 miles per hour, and that's going to persist into the afternoon with some wind speeds picking up through the central part of the state. These are our current temperatures right now. As we see, we, we're having a lot of 50 to high 50s to even low 60 temperatures for right now. But I'll have more on that in my full weather forecast. Back to you. Thank you, Jonathan. The numbers are in, and Eastern New Mexico University enrollment is up by 5.4% in spring 2024, compared to 2023. This marks an increase in both undergraduate and graduate students attending programs at ENMU. NMU currently has 3,759 undergraduate students and 1,350 graduate students. Enrollment is up as the university reaches its third consecutive year of growth with the community, crediting NMU's fantastic staff and teaching faculty. Anyone interested in becoming a future Greyhound can go to enmu.edu for more information. The New Mexico House of Representatives passed House Bill 298 in order to establish the Service Members and Veterans Suicide Prevention Program. The new program would aim to reduce suicide deaths among New Mexico service members and veterans by raising awareness of the issue and improving access to suicide prevention, behavioral health, and mental health resources. According to lead sponsor New Mexico representative, Vietnam veteran, and Bronze Star recipient Elicio Alcon said, New Mexico tragically has one of the highest veteran suicide rates in our nation. 
Our veterans have made great personal sacrifices to protect our freedoms and safety as Americans. We owe it to them to have their backs when they go through difficult times, end quote. The program would promote evidence-based practices to increase awareness among our veterans population about the root causes of suicide and, and improve the resources available to help them. The bill now moves forward to the Senate. The city of Roswell has become the sixth city in Mexico to get a baby box. It was dedicated and blessed at the Roswell Fire Department. The idea behind baby boxes is the program ending infant abandonment. Last month, Safe Haven Baby Boxes had two anonymous surrenders at baby box locations. A key aspect of the mission is the baby box, which allows for the legal safe surrender of a baby completely anonymous. In 2023, 17 baby babies were surrendered via the baby box. The New Mexico State Legislature has put aside more than half a million dollars for several studies involving the state's signature crop, green chili. New Mexico's news network's Jason Espinoza has more. Chile is an integral part of New Mexico's agricultural economy and according to the New Mexico Department of Agriculture is a representative crop in New Mexico and drives tourism and other revenue generating activities to the state. The Department of Agriculture also notes most New Mexico chili is harvested by hand. However, labor challenges hamper producer ability to cultivate and harvest chili in a cost-effective, timely manner. The development of New Mexico agricultural equipment, technologies, and plant cultivars ideal for mechanical harvest of green chili has been a priority of the New Mexico chili pepper industry. Harvest mechanization is thought to be the answer to the continuous farm labor shortage for harvesting and may also reduce production costs to remain competitive in a global marketplace. Mechanical chili harvest is more than just developing a machine to harvest the pepper, but also requires research and development of plant cultivars that will work with mechanical harvesting and destemming. For the New Mexico News Network, I'm Jason Espinoza. Thank you, Jason. After the break, Jonathan will have their full, their full weather forecast for you. But first, here's a look at today's financial markets. But as you can see over here for the western part of the state, we're also getting a lot of mix of rain and snow. It's going to start piling up through San Francisco, and it's going to head all the way up into Portland, Oregon as well as we start to see that. Taking a look at our wind speeds, however, we've got currently some 10 miles per hour winds. Nothing too crazy is going on. But as you can see right here, we're going to see those 20 to 30 miles per hour winds. And as we follow this line, we're going to all the way get up into the 50 mile per hour range as it stands. As we start to pass into tomorrow, we're going to see some more wind speeds sort of towards midday, and we're going to hit that 20 to 30 miles per hour winds for a greater part of the state. But as we pass into Friday, those wind speeds are going to start to slowly die down for New Mexico, and, it's, and as we pass up, we're going to see those 10 miles per hour winds, but it's not going to go into like that 20 and 30s as it stands right now. Taking a look at our current temperatures, as we see up here in Farmington and Gallup, we're having a 50 and 51, so it's nice and cool. We've got 66 in, in Las Cruces and 64 in Truth or Consequences. For the central part of the state, we've got 57 in Albuquerque with 51 in Santa Fe. We've got a 50 up in Raton with a 56 in Clayton. 68 over here in Carlsbad with a 66 in, Ho with a 66 in Hobbs. As we take a look at eastern New Mexico, we've got 61 in Portales, 60 in Clovis, 58 in Tucumcari. Sorry about that. My math is not progressing as it stands right now. And um, as it's 49 in Rio Doso and 64 in Alamogordo. And there we go. We've passed up down here into the, 
into New Mexico. Currently, there's not a lot of rain or snow going on in the state. Uh, but as we slowly pass up, eastern New Mexico is going to be more of the same as it doesn't progress as it stands right now. And it, it, once again, taking a look at those wind speeds as I start to slowly pass through this map as we've got here, we're going to see those things I talked about earlier. And then it is still going to be stuck on this one. I am so sorry about that. But we are going to have those 57 down here in Silver City with 64 in Alamogordo. We're going to see 49 over here in Rio Dosa with 58 in Santa Rosa and 58 in Tucumcari. And for West Texas, we're going to see 63 up here in Alamogordo with 66 in Lubbock and a 70 over here in Midland. There we go. Now my map is progressing. And as we take a look at tonight's lows, we're going to see 20s throughout most of the state as we've got a 25 in Farmington with a 23 in Gallup. We're going to see 42 down here in Carlsbad with 43 in Hobbs. Eastern New Mexico is going to be mostly in the mid to low 30s with 36. And then tomorrow's highs is going to be mostly 50s through 60s throughout New Mexico. And we're going to see 67 in Portales and 65 in Clovis. And taking a look at, at Portales we've got here, We've got 67 on Thursday with a, 50, with a 44 and 62 on Saturday and Sunday. We're going to get 69 on Monday, 75 on Tuesday, and a 70 degrees and windy on Wednesday. Cool. Sounds like it'll be kind of nice and sunny except for that wind. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm definitely looking forward to Thursday being around the 60s. It's going to be a really good time. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for you right now, but we'll be back with more news after this break. A popular television series will be returning for its third season, and once again it will be filmed almost entirely in New Mexico. The New Mexico Film Office announced this week that season three of the television series The Cleaning Lady is filmed in and around Albuquerque. Beginning Tuesday, March 5th on Fox, season three of The Cleaning Lady will continue filming. The emotionally driven character drama about a whip-smart Cambodian doctor played by series star Elodie Young in the series she comes to the U.S. for medical treatment to save her ailing son. When the system fails and attempts to push her down, Thony, the character's name, refuses to be marginalized and instead takes matters into her own hands. The production will employ approximately 256 New Mexico crew members, six New Mexico principal actors, and approximately 2,384 New Mexico background talent. The Rockefeller Foundation announced on February 12th that Excel Energy has joined the Economic Opportunity Coalition, or EOC. The EOC is a public-private partnership with the United States government designed to align and catalyze investments in underserved communities and create wealth with a priority placed on supporting small businesses and expanding access to the capital. Excel Energy, as well as other energy companies, are working towards cleaner, cleaner energy opportunities for smaller businesses, has a broader supply diversity goal of 25% of spending on materials and services by 2025. Excel Energy also spent over $1.2 billion in 2022 with businesses owned by women, minorities, veterans, LGBTQ plus individuals, and people with disabilities, as well as small businesses, resulting in a $2.2 billion economic impact to the U.S. economy and supporting over 11,500 jobs. For more information about the Eco Economic Opportunity Coalition, visit www.rockefellerfoundation.org. On February 4th, the House of Representatives passed legislation establishing a clear standard for affirmative consent at New Mexico colleges and universities to prevent sexual assault and harassment, and has now passed to the Senate. Affirmative consent refers to the knowing, voluntary, and mutual decision among participants to engage in sexual or physical activity with clear permission provided. House Bill 151 requires all post-secondary educational institutions that receive state funds to adopt trauma-enforced policies addressing affirmative consent and investigate allegations of sexual assault and harassment. This includes providing programs to help prevent sexual misconduct, training for staff responsible for investigating allegations, and health care counseling and other services for those who are impacted. 
Eastern New Mexico University is hosting many events in celebration of Black History Month. Carly Pinkins, a UNM doctoral candidate in history, will be talking about her life as a graduate student and her inspiration from t Oprah on the 20th. UNMU Assistant Professor of Agriculture, Dr. Anu Angale, will talk about her home country of Nigeria and its rich culture on February 27th. And there will be a leap year celebration with the Kirk House Band on February 29th. There will be refreshments and party favors. For more information, you can contact the African American Affairs Department at 575-562-2437 or at their email, portalis.africanamericanaffairs at enmu.edu. In honor of Valentine's Day, it's important to look back to the very saint it is named after. St. Valentine is the patron saint of lovers, people with epilepsy and beekeepers. He was a priest and a physician. According to legend, St. Valentine signed a letter from your Valentine to his jailer's daughter, whom he had befriended and healed from blindness. St. Valentine is still recognized today in the Roman Catholic Church, but was removed from the general Roman calendar in 1969 for the lack of reliable information on him. February 14th, 278 years ago, in the days of Emperor Claudius II, St. Valentine was beheaded on what used to be known as Feast Day. This was the round the time of persecution of Christians. Coming up, Jaden will have updates on the Super Bowl and ENMU athletics. Stay tuned and find out more in his full sports report. Talos Rams boys basketball had a loss in their district game to Lovington, 53-63. But on the upside, they are still ranked ninth in the 4A class state rankings. The Lady Rams had a loss to Lovington in district play, 46-57. And with that loss, they fall out of the top 10 in the class 4A state rankings. What a great week of basketball for the Rams. e &E basketball had a couple of games this past week. week their first game was in Wichita Falls, Texas against Midwestern State, and it was not the Hounds' night as they lost 54-93. And on Saturday, they played Cameron in Oklahoma, and it was a close game, but the Hounds lost 80-84. The women's also played Ms. Midwestern State, and they won a score of 65-60, but on Saturday, it was a different story as they lost in a great game to Cameron, 68-60. 69, what a weekend of Hounds basketball. e &E Baseball had a five-game series at Texas A&M International. They lost the five-game series 3-2, and that has the Hounds with a 4-4 record as they get ready for a four-game series this weekend versus Texas A&M Kingsville at Greyhound Field. Softball starts the year off strong with a 7-1 record after they won three in a row last weekend against UCCS Fort Lewis and C CSU Pueblo. They get ready for a three-game series at Texas A&M International this weekend. We'll have scores and highlights next week on these games. Super Bowl 58 was this weekend. Motion, low snap. He runs and he throws. Caught. Touchdown. It's caught. Hardman caught the ball. The Chiefs have won. The Chiefs have won. The entire Super Bowl 58 was this weekend, and the Kansas City Chiefs won an overtime thrill against the 49ers with the 25-20 victory. This last, this was a thrilling game. This is the Chiefs' fourth Super Bowl and third in the last five years, and going back to back. The MVP was Patrick Mahomes. This is his third Super Bowl MVP. The NFL Draft will be April 25th to the 27th in Detroit. That's all the sports I have for you in this sports world. We'll be back at the desk after the break.
Take a look at that. As the 30-day legislative session comes to a close, the Greyhound Sound are seen here performing their award-winning Metallica show tunes at the State Roundhouse in honor of Higher Education Day. The Greyhound Sound had a full crowd in attendance listening to their tune, their tunes months after their victory in Metallica's inaugural For Whom the Band Tolls marching competition. We will have more coverage of the Greyhound Sound appearance at the State Roundhouse here on News 3 New Mexico Friday evening. A unique donation offer of a one-time nuclear delivery device leads to a startling discovery in a Washington garage. Jimmy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Authorities in Washington state were blown away to find a Cold War era missile inside a local man's garage. It started when police were contacted by the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio, who said a resident in Bellevue, Washington called about donating a deceased neighbor's very unique antique, a Douglas Air II Genie, a Cold War era rocket designed to carry a nuclear warhead. Police and bomb squad officials visited the house and did find the relic rocket, but only as a former shell of itself rusted out with no warhead attached. The rocket was deemed inert and thus okay for donation. The cops posted to Twitter along with a pithy Rocket Man reference saying they think it's gonna be a long, long time before they get another call like this one. 911, do you need police, fire, or medical? I guess police. There's a kangaroo in my uh, apartment complex. Deputies in Tampa, Florida got a strange call of their own when a kangaroo on the loose was spotted hopping around an apartment complex's grounds. Deputies responded and confirmed the strange suspect, but the wild roost chase didn't last long. The furry fella was safely reunited with its rightful owner. Now let's send it over to sports to get a recap of the big game. I'm, of course, talking about the annual Animal Planet Puppy Bowl, a goofy gridiron tradition starring a fleet of furry footballers. Defending champs Team Fluff took on Team Ruff, and while Team Fluff took an early two-touchdown lead, Team Ruff recovered in the fourth quarter to win 72-69, to taking home the illustrious Lombarki Trophy. Fans understandably went nuts after the victory. I, oh, nope, wait, that was from the other big game. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Thank you, Jeremy. Well, that's all we have for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good evening.